Hey guys, in this video we're going to take a look at the physical and chemical changes that occur in the digestive system. Now we've already identified physical and chemical changes. We've determined that physical changes are changes that occur where substances change but they still remain the same substance. Where I take an apple and I turn that apple into applesauce. Either way, it's still an apple. That's a physical change. And then also chemical changes where I take a substance and I turn it into something completely new. So when your mouth and the saliva in your mouth takes bread and turns that into sugar, that's a chemical change. It's a new substance. So we're going to look at the different changes that occur in the digestive system and, and at each stage of the digestion process. So again, let's look at digestion and nutrients. Now digestion is the process where food is broken down by the digestive system into small nutrients that can be absorbed by the body, that can be absorbed by the blood. So the whole goal of the digestive system is to take a large piece of food and break it down into a small enough piece down to the molecule size, a small enough piece that it can be absorbed into the, the blood and that those nutrients can go to all of the cells in the body. Because remember, every last cell in the body needs food. So nutrients are these tiny molecules that are absorbed and broken down into the blood and again absorbed and taken to each cell in the body. So there are two major types of digestion. We have mechanical digestion and then we also have chemical digestion. So mechanical digestion, right here, mechanical digestion is physical changes. Mechanical digestion is physical changes. It's where your body breaks down food and it just makes it into smaller pieces, pieces that are easier to break down and absorb. So I gave you the example, taking the apple and turning it into applesauce. Okay, the teeth grind up and mash up that apple and break it down into small pieces. It's still apple. Okay, it's a physical change. That's mechanical digestion. Then we have chemical digestion. And chemical digestion, in its name, is a chemical change. It's where there are enzymes and the different chemicals in the body mix with the food and turn the food into something new. When I take breads and carbohydrates and turn them into sugars, that's a chemical change. So we're going to look at both of those changes in the digestive system, both physical, mechanical changes, and then also chemical changes. Okay, so first, the mouth. Digestion begins in the mouth, okay? That's where it all starts off at. And in the mouth, we both have mechanical digestion, okay, physical changes, and then also chemical digestion, chemical changes. So physically, okay, the, the mouth grinds up, mashes up food, okay? The teeth and the tongue grind up food, okay? They mash it up. It makes it easier to swallow. It also makes it easier for the chemical digestion to occur. So we have this grinding up and mashing of food with the teeth and also the tongue aids in that process, moves the food around and so forth. And that is that mechanical digestion that's occurring in the mouth. However, we also have chemical digestion that's occurring. In the mouth, chemical digestion occurs when these little chemicals called enzymes Okay, they're little chemicals in, called enzymes in your saliva, in your spit, in your saliva that mix with the food. So in the case of the bread, when you put a piece of bread in your mouth, there's mechanical digestion that occurs because you mash up that bread into small little pieces, but it's still bread. But at the same time, chemical digestion is occurring because the saliva and the enzymes in your spit, the chemicals in your spit, are actually starting to turn that bread into sugar, even when it's in your mouth. You can't quite taste it yet. You don't hang on to that bread in your mouth for long enough to start tasting that sugary substance. However, it is already starting that digestion process. So the mouth plays a pretty big role in getting the whole digestion process started, both chemically and physically. So here's a larger picture of the mouth. Okay, we have obviously the teeth here, and the teeth are grinding and mashing up the food, making it into smaller pieces, making that mechanical digestion occur, mashing up that apple, mashing up that bread. And we also have in the mouth the tongue, tongues moving around the food, okay, tongues helping the teeth grind and mash up the food. And then lastly, we have these guys down here, which are salivary glands, and the salivary glands are creating saliva, they're creating the spit. Okay, but they also have that chemicals. Now, most of your spit is water, but it also has that chemical in there that starts to chemically change that food, starts to turn that bread into sugar. So, 
we're going to go on to the next step of digestion. So we're going from the mouth, and obviously when you chew up and you start to grind up that food and start to change it both mechanically and chemically, then you swallow the food. And this food goes down this esophagus. The esophagus is this tube in your throat, okay? It's a muscular tube, okay? It's this tube, and it's actually in the front is your trachea. Your esophagus, your esophagus is behind, and it's a muscular tube. And we've talked about this before. Uh, this esophagus can actually squeeze the food down to your stomach in these wave-like contractions that we call peristalsis. And you can see in the diagrams here about how the food is being squeezed down to the stomach. And I even said once before, you could actually stand on your head and still swallow food because your esophagus having that muscular lining is going to squeeze it down to your stomach, whether you're standing on your head or not. Okay, um, So very important in this process. Now, here's another view of the esophagus. Okay, And again, you can see this squeezing of the food down to the stomach and these wave-like contractions, okay? Um, but it's important to note, in the esophagus, basically no digestion is occurring. There's no physical digestion occurring, maybe a little bit. I guess the food could be mashed up a little bit as it squeezed to the stomach, but definitely no chemical digestion is occurring. It's just basically a passageway. It's a connection between the mouth and the stomach. So remember, in the mouth, we have physical or chem mechanical digestion and chemical digestion. In the esophagus, basically, we don't have any of those types of digestion processes occurring. So the next stage of the digestion process is going to occur in the stomach. Okay, so here we have the stomach. Now the stomach, uh, the stomach here is basically a place where food can be stored, okay, until it can be mixed up and digested, and then also mixed and broken down. So stored, mixed with the gastric, gastric juices, and then broken down. Okay, the majority, the majority, okay, I'm going to put majority, the majority of digestion occurs in the stomach, okay? Your stomach actually has a muscular lining as well. Both mechanical and chemical digestion are occurring here. Your stomach is moving around to mash up your food. If you've ever heard your stomach gurgling and making noises, okay, we, uh, we hear call them stomach pangs and so forth, that that's where our food is, act our stomach's actually moving, mashing up the food that is in there, okay? Mechanical digestion. Also, chemical digestion is occurring. We have some more enzymes. We have pepsin, okay? Uh, that is breaking down the food. We have hydrochloric acid that's breaking down the food. Proteins are broken down in the stomach. So all this digestion is occurring in the stomach, both mechanically and chemically. Okay, and then we'll take another look at the stomach. And you can see the stomach being this sac-like structure that, that stores and holds the food. Again, here's the esophagus. The food's coming down from the esophagus into the stomach. And we have these layers of the stomach. They're actually coated with snot, coated with mucus. Okay, to protect the stomach from itself, to protect the stomach from the hydrochloric acid that is in your stomach, breaking down that food and getting to ready to set it on to the next stage of digestion, which is the small intestines. All right, so then we have the small intestines, okay? Small intestines is this long coiled up tube, and you can see down here from our diagram, it's really, really long. It's fairly narrow, but it's long. And this is where most of the food is absorbed into the bloodstream. We've broken it down to the small enough point onto the molecular level, okay? We have some more chemical digestion that's occurring here with fat being broken down um, into smaller molecules. We have some more peristalsis occurring, so there's a little bit of mechanical digestion occurring, but peristalsis squeezing the food along. But here's where most of the food is actually picked up by the blood absorbed into the blood, the bloodstream, and taken to the cells and the small intestines. <clears throat> so, again, let's take a larger look at the small intestines. You can see that it's this, you know, the, again, this coiled up structure, real long, lots of small intestines here, okay? And uh, the reason it's so long is that way it gives the food more time to be absorbed. Okay, the longer that small intestine, it's 20 feet long all coiled up in your stomach, but gives the food lots of time, lots of path, pathways and time to, for that food to be absorbed into the blood. If the small intestine was real short, then the, blood, then the uh, food wouldn't have very much time to be absorbed. But since it's so long and has that big old long travel, that big old long journey it has to take through that passageway, the food can be absorbed. All right. And then finally, we get to the final step of the digestion process, which is the large intestines. We often call this the colon. Now, the large intestines 
is is larger. It's it's a larger tube, but it's but it, it's but it's shorter. Okay, small intestines is a narrow tube and it's real long. Large intestines is a larger tube and shorter. And you can see in this picture here that it is uh, going all the way around and it kind of surrounds the small intestines. Here, uh, water is absorbed. The majority of the water in your, in your digestive system is absorbed into the body. Okay, really no chemical digestion is taking here. Okay, all the chemical digestion has occurred. Um, most of this is, again, you still have some peristalsis, food, that remaining food being moved along and collected, the food that was not absorbed into the blood. Uh, water is absorbed into the blood here. So uh, this is where we get a lot of our water intake into our body. And this is basically where we have the collection. We have the collection process and in the, in the, in going towards the end of the colon. Okay, and, and ready, getting ready for waste removal. And then we'll take a, another look at a larger view of the colon, okay, the large intestines. And this is basically where the digestion process start, stops. So we've got the mouth where mechanical and chemical digestion are occurring. Teeth are mashing up the food. Saliva and the enzymes in saliva are starting to turn that food into a new substance. Carbohydrates into sugar. We have esophagus where it's squeezing, peristalsis is squeezing the food down to our stomach. Okay, really no digestion is occurring in the esophagus, but we have that movement of the food from the mouth to the stomach. In the stomach, we have the majority of the digestion process occurring. Okay, we have the majority of that stuff happening because the food is mechanically mashing, moving and mashing, the stomach is chemically mashing, excuse me, mechanically mashing up the food. It's churning it all up, stirring it all up, but yet we also have the enzymes and the hydrochloric acid that are taking that food and they're breaking down the proteins and chemically changing it into a substance that our body can use. Then the food goes on to the small intestines. Remember the small intestines? It's small because it's narrow, but it's super long. And the food goes through the small intestines through peristalsis again, and it con continues to be chemically digested, chemically broken down, okay? And that's where the food is really on a molecular level and, and able to be absorbed into the blood, and the blood can take it to all the cells. And then we have the large intestines. And in the large intestines, that's where the remaining food is collected. Water is absorbed from that remaining food and sent on into the blood so the, the cells can get that water that they need. And then it's collected there at the end of the large intestines and gets and is getting ready to be removed from the body. Okay, I know this was a lot of information, so you need, may need to go back and pause and rewind and watch this again. Uh, but make sure that you understand the different parts of the digestive system and what type of digestion, mechanical or chemical digestion is occurring at each stage and that, dig that digestive process.